wrapping up the championship round of the Geico PBA Summer Shootout continues between Team Track and Team Brunswick. The track duo features a player of the year and tournament champions winner in Mika Koivu Niemi. But so does Brunswick with Sean Rash. Which team has the edge? Find out next. Welcome to the 2012 Geico PBA Summer Shootout. Along with Randy Peterson, I'm Lon McCarran. 156 miles of canals and rivers make up the Chicago River. 38 immovable bridges help keep the water and road traffic flowing smoothly. And flowing smoothly is what Team Track has been doing. They defeated Columbia 300 in match number one of the Stepladder Finals, 236-222. And now they take on the powerful Brunswick team in match number two. And the Brunswick team spearheaded by reigning player of the year, Sean Rash. He hooked up with Chris Loeschetter here in the Stepladder Finals, but Team Track will take to the approach first. Mika Koivu Niemi, he was perfect in his opening match against Team Columbia 300. Mika trying to set the tone once again for his team. And he rolls right along. That's six in a row for Mika. Step ladder format, win and move on, lose and go home. And we're using a Baker style doubles format. One player will bowl the even frames, one player the odd frames, until all 10 frames are completed. Chris Loeschetter in here for Brunswick. We'd seen Ryan Simonelli a lot during the eliminator rounds, but Loeschetter taking the spot here. He doesn't like it, and you can see why. A six count for Loeschetter. And a tough lead, the three, six, nine, ten. Tough because you've got the sleeper pin, the nine pin behind the three. Sticks a little bit, pulls it, and now he's left himself with a tough leave. A lot of pressure on Loeschetter coming in to this very important match and to throw a ball like that. He's definitely feeling the heat under his collar, and he opens up in his first frame. Well, not the way you want to start if you're Chris Loeschetter, but he's got a good partner. Yeah, the 2012 Chris Schinkel PBA Player of the Year, Sean Rash. Rash coils and uncorks and gets them all. And that'll take a little sting out of the open frame in the first. But that sting will remain throughout this match. We'll see how big a moment it actually is. Now to Mike Fagan. Fagan. Three of six strikes in match number one. Yeah, but the biggie was the first shot in the tenth frame when he struck to lock it up in the last match. A big win over Columbia 300 in that first match. Now Fagan with his first ball here in match number two. Count them all. Fagan backs up Mika with a strike of his own. Good way for a power player to delay hook. Throw it in the air. Now Mike feels very fortunate to be bowling with Mika in this competition. Anytime you don't have to bowl against him, it's fantastic. So I'm just excited not to have to be up against him, honestly. Uh, you know, Mika's one of the most mentally tough, physically tough bowlers out there. And, um, you know, I'm just glad he's on my side. And Mika has been perfect on Mike's side so far in the stepladder finals. Rock solid thus far on the left lane for the big fin. Mika keeps it up with another strike. That's the way you take advantage of an open frame given to you by your opponents. Mika Koivuniemi just strike after strike after strike. That's seven in a row now for him. 
Now Chris Loschetter. The pressure was on him from the get-go. He opened up in the first, and boy, what he must be feeling right now. And Loschetter comes through with a big ball. That's huge for him. Sarcastically, he says to Sean Rash, was that any better? <laughs> that was a lot better. All right, now Sean Rash. He picked up his second major win of this past season, winning the Tournament of Champions. That was just part of the reason why PBA Commissioner Tom Clark handed Rash the Chris Schinkel Award as PBA Player of the Year this week in Chicago. Well, winning is always special. It doesn't matter if it's a regular event or a major, but uh, you know, having so many chances over the last couple years to win, it uh, definitely felt great to finally uh, be the last man standing holding the trophy. Rash from not far away in Montgomery, Illinois. Some of the players staying at his place before the competition started. Rash struck in the second, and he strikes here in the fourth. Brunswick and track. Early action indicates this is going to be a hated battle right to the end. Welcome back to Chicago in the stepladder finals of the 2012 Geico PBA Summer Shootout. Match number two of these finals. Randy Brunswick made a late change bringing in Chris Loschetter for Ryan Simonelli. Did that surprise you? Yeah, big surprise. Chris Loschetter's only thrown five shots throughout this entire competition. So I went over and asked the Brunswick coach and rep Chuck Gardner what was going on. He said, you know, after every re-oil, strip and re-oil of the lanes, the left side of the lane for Ryan Simonelli continued to get tighter and tighter. He simply lost his ball reaction. They decided to go with Chris Loschetter. Loschetter with a shaky start, but followed that up with a strike. You see Rash trying to pump up his partner there on the bench. Mike Fagan now to roll. Fagan looking to keep the string alive as team track is perfect through three frames. And Fagan keeps them perfect through four frames. The king of swing has learned the art of versatility. Once known for a guy that just liked to stand left and throw right, he's got the complete package now. Now his partner, 45-year-old Mika Koivu Niemi, three-time majors champion, USBC Masters, US Open, PBA Tournament of Champions in 2011. Miko with just a seven count here. He flinches. And the first time he's not struck in a game and a half. Looks like he just caught a little too much of it at the bottom of the swing, and the ball breaks loose going through the nose. He's left with a 3-6-10. Mika prides himself on being an excellent spare shooter. And just that leave of three pins has to send a bit of adrenaline towards Team Brunswick. Now Mika to clean it up. And Mika cannot as he leaves the 10 pin and opens up in the fifth. Big mistake there. All the momentum going tracks way. Now the deficit's down to six. As Mika chops the three six off of the 10. Wow, a huge moment for both teams right there. Now after an open frame with his first attempt, he did strike in the third frame, looking for another here in the fifth. And he does get it, he is solid. He's bounced back nicely, and I think because of that, we should now start calling him Loesch. Loesch. Kind of like Madonna and Prince. Just one word. <laughs> Here's Loesch. Loesch is perfect on that ball. 
Well, Fagan bounced back from an open frame in match number one, and now it looks like Loesch has done likewise. Sean Rash now. I like how you bought into that. <laughs> Team player. I'm an announcer. Fewer syllables, the better. Rash. One for the thumb for Brunswick. Five in a row. Loesch took the lead for Team Brunswick with his strike in the fifth. And Sean Rash just added to it with that hit right there. Playing the deep inside line, revs and rotation. And the 10 pin party in the pit. And now Mike Fagan trying to quell some of the momentum that Brunswick has gathered. And that's not going to do it. Back to back 3-6-10s for Team Track. And they're in trouble. Everything going Brunswick's way right now. It's amazing how quickly things can turn around. Remember, the leadoff open by Chris Loeschetter. Now, all of a sudden, track finds themselves trailing. Fagan do what Mika could not. Oh, that 10 wobbles and finally falls, but nearly another open from Team Track. Very fortunate team track doesn't have back-to-back -back open frames. That was a great break of the 10-pin falling late. Watch this. He's going to chop this kind of like Mika did. And then the 6-pin catches just enough of the 10 to make it go down. Track was looking so strong, but once there was a crack in the dike, the flood started coming through, and bad things started happening on top of bad things. And now Mika trying to get back on track. Back on track with track. 14 down. And Mika is back. All right, well, with that strike there, they still have a big game potentially, but they have to start throwing a lot more strikes as the Loesch has done ever since the opening in the first frame. Loesch has come back really strong. So has teammate and reigning player of the year, Sean Rash. Nothing but strikes for that man. Don't go anywhere. Lots more to come here at the Geico PBA Summer Shootout. Welcome back to the Geico PBA Summer Shootout. A couple of days ago, some of the PBA players, including Mike Fagan and Sean Rash, took in a White Sox-Indians game at U.S. Cellular Field. And not only that, Sean Rash got the honor of throwing out the first pitch, and he was ready. We threw the ball around a little bit yesterday at the cookout, and, uh, you know, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you've done it before, you know how to do it again. So hopefully uh, we're ready to go. Rash took to the bump, and he was ready. Or was he? Apparently his bicycle had training wheels. Just a bit short. Watch the cameraman in the lower left. He thought he was going out. I thought I'd be able to throw a little bit better, but... You know, I slipped because wearing tennis shoes, not having any warm-ups and, and whatnot, and threw it straight in the dirt about 15 feet in front of the plate. Sean's friend, Cubs pitcher Randy Wells, talked with Randy Peterson about Rash's form. Randy, we're going to take a look at Sean's pitching style here. I want you to critique it for us, okay? Do I want to see this? Uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> Terrible walks, man. You like the shirt? I love bowling, but those shirts should not be worn outside <laughs> of the ball. All right, here we go. I'm glad he wears pants in here, too. Those legs are terrible. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, what do you think about I mean, that it got halfway there. Well, I mean, if you're going to take that long, slow stroll and act like, you know, you're cool and stuff, you got to be, you got to do something better than that. He didn't even get it to the dirt. Oh, God. Wow. Good thing he did that in the White Sox. If he brought that to Wrigley, we'd definitely boom. Well, Sean is certainly in his element right now as Brunswick holds a 14-pin advantage on track in the middle of the seventh. Middle of the seventh. Randy, it's time to sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. I'll let you start. <laughs> you know, not only these elite bowlers are members of the PBA, you too can be a member of the PBA. Multiple membership options are available. Find out more at PBA.com. And who we have here? Loesch. Loesch. Loesch with all 10 once again. Boy, what a bounce back from that opening frame he threw. Yeah, heck of a comeback for Chris Loesch. 
Just a testament to his talent level. Even though he's never won out here, he's been very close numerous times. He shakes off that open in the first frame, and he's been perfect ever since. And you saw Chuck Gardner, who's taking all credit for putting low shedder in there. Well, of course sure. he is. <laughs> Brilliant idea. Sean Rash. Can't throw a baseball, but he can Go throw on. a bowling ball as good as anyone. Dang it. Big and break. I, as soon as I say that. Big break there, Lon, in not splitting. That ball went right through the schnozola, only leaving the 6-10. All right, so Rash will try to clean it up and see what happened on this ball. Just never got it far enough right. Big four standing for a split second. Ooh. <laughs> Remember, the players haven't shot a lot of spares throughout this competition. In fact, that is the first spare attempt for Sean Rash. That thing flew off his fingers. Yeah, it, it was a little left to target as well. All right, so a spare for Brunswick. Fagan on the approach. His team down by 22. They had the lead early in this match. Fagan doesn't like it, and he leaves too. That does not help Team Tracks cause. Not good when you're trailing, and then to boot, you pull it, stick a little bit, leave the 310. Big trouble now for Team Track. Trailing by 22, Fagan needs to convert the baby split to avoid another open frame. Fagan does just that in the eighth. Time to get back on the strike train. Mika needs to get it started right here. Track a max score of 235. If they go to the wall, Brunswick can still shoot 257. Mika Koivu Niemi can't do it all himself, but he can certainly help the cause here. At least keep them in the ball game with a strike. Mika's only glitch came in the fifth, and he opened up in the fifth. He's back. More speed, a little farther right down the lane, and that equals 10 in the pit for Mika Koivuniemi. Now, Beloche steps up in the ninth frame, his team leading by 22. All he's thinking about right now is putting a strike up on the board for Team Brunswick. There is Chuck Gardner. A lot of heat on him, too. His boy better perform. Low Shedder keeps the Brunswick train at full speed. Nobody happier than that, man. <laughs> he says. <laughs> Kirk, thank you. Sean Rash steps up in the 10th frame. A strike here on this ball will lock it up for Team Brunswick. They will advance to take on 900 Global. Sean's been here before, and he does it once again with the strike to secure the win for Brunswick. Pretty casual about that. No react after throwing that one absolutely buried in the 1-3 pocket. This puts Team Brunswick in the 240s, and that's all she wrote for Team Track. Now that was huge, but their job is not done. They have been maybe the most powerful team late in this competition, though Storm has the number one seed. Brunswick has been very strong late in the doubles. Certainly here in this stepladder competition. Another strike for Rash. And Mika Koivu, Niemi, and Mike Fagan eliminated. They can pack their bags and head home. Their shootout is over. Let's get a final count for Brunswick. Rash on the approach once again. Uh, one pin short of their max, 256 for Team Brunswick.
So Team Track put on a late surge and they almost completed their goal. Brunswick advances to match number three against 900 Global. More to come from the Geico PBA Summer Shootout. Back inside the 10-pin bowling lounge in Chicago, the Geico PBA Summer Shootout has advanced past the second match. Here's how we got here on the Geico Championship Recap. After a slow start by Chris Lowshedder, he was simply brilliant after that. Never missed striking. And after a quick start by Team Track, Mika Koivuniemi leaves a 3-6-10 and misses it. Fagan then steps up. He pulls it. He goes through the nose, leaving the 3-10. He was able to convert, but Track never got back on Track. It was all Team Brunswick and that man, Sean Rash, as he steps up in the 10th frame and doubles to shoot 256 to snap off track. So all according to form so far in this stepladder finals, third seeded Brunswick moves through and they will next take on 900 Global. Randy is down with our winners. All right, thanks, Lon. Chuck Gardner, tour rep for Brunswick. Talk about the decision-making that went into you substituting Chris Lowshedder for Ryan Simonelli. Well, it was really a team decision. Uh, Ryan is one first one that brought it up. Chris's look has been fantastic. And Ryan struggled as the day went on. The oil got down the lane. They got tighter on the left. And, and he was a little uncomfortable. So really, it was Ryan's decision. We talked about it as a team and, and, and made a good decision, I think. Yeah, it looks like it uh, turned out to be a good one. Uh, Chris, you got off to a shaky start. How nervous were you coming in? Uh, pretty nervous. That was a pretty bad shot. That first one's always roughest for me, but uh, I knew I had Sean behind my back clear of the year, so I knew once I got going, it would be all right. Good job, man. Sean, I have nothing for you. Thanks. Good luck, guys. Randy having fun with Sean Rash. Team Brunswick really came alive late in the eliminator rounds, and now with the team of Rash and Lowshedder, they look like the super team to beat. For Randy Peterson, I'm Lon McCarron. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Brunswick faces number two seed 900 Global next here on ESPN as the 2012 Geico PBA shootout rolls on.